What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and it's time to talk about my favorite subject, which is gear. And I really like talking about this. I don't know why I don't more often. Actually, there's kind of a reason that I want to talk about it today, and that's because almost everything in my kit in the last couple of months has changed. There are some radical new technology aspects that I've used in the last couple of months that have really transformed the way that I am shooting video, especially for weddings. And so I wanted to run down some of the items of my kit for weddings and uh, video, audio, as well as some lighting gear. If you wanna see really the complete kit, including everything, and if you wanna get links to all of this stuff, head to my full gear page. It's at kit.com slash learning cameras. If you guys use those links and stuff like that, it also helps kind of support the site. So I really appreciate you using those whenever you can. You know, this is just something that I wanted to tell you from my experience. now. Gear is a subject that is kind of crazy. I have used more expensive cameras than these before. I've used less expensive cameras than these before. You can use all kinds of stuff to create some great stunning footage. You don't have to use this setup, but this is the one that's been working really well for me lately. Now, some of you might look at this and be like, oh man, he's not walking around with red epics. And some of you guys might be looking at this and man, I really wish I could have a kit this awesome. So it really just depends on what you're looking at. I'll tell you some cheaper items as well that you could possibly use to get some really, really good footage without spending a ton of money. So let's kind of dive in and take a look at some of the gear that I use. And this is for my wedding videography business. Also, if you want to check out some of the footage, I don't know, maybe I should release some of it on this YouTube page. You can sound off as well for anything you want to see in the comments below. I always check those comments. Sometimes you guys are really nice and sometimes I produce a video which produces quite a bit of hate. Either way, I read these comments, so sound off below. Let me know if you want to see certain things or some footage from the weddings. So let's kind of dive in and see what we got here. Now, I did just show you this bag. It's brand new. It's called the Hex DSLR Medium. I actually like it a lot. And it's been really good for me so far. I used it for my last wedding. It holds most of my gear inside of here, especially my cameras and stuff like that. And it makes going around traveling really easily. I can take quite a bit of weight as well, and it doesn't kind of get on my back. So let's kind of sort through this. Uh, first thing I want to show you is something I normally don't carry in my bag, but that's the Mavic Pro. And this is one of the newest ones that I've been shooting with. I also have a DJI Phantom 3 4K. And this is kind of a time period that I think is kind of awkward for drones. The new Phantom 4 Pro Plus is really, really cool. Kind of blends the top technology with some other cool features and a really, really nice camera. It's the one I'm looking to, but you have to have drone licenses in order to fly in most places. And so I kind of want to make sure I get that before I spend all of this money on new drones. But the Mavic and the Phantom 3 4K are both great cameras if you're starting out and don't cost too much money. And also make sure you get an ND filter from these. Polar Pro makes some great ones. And these are some solid options to use. Uh, let's do cameras. All right, so my main cameras now, Panasonic GH5 and I am finishing up my full review on this. This has been my main go-to shooter for a couple of months now since it came out and has really transformed the way that I am able to shoot 4K 60 frames per second. I use that a lot, especially during the getting ready aspects, uh, coming in, coming out. You need to be prepared for anything and sometimes moments happen that are just two to three seconds long and you need a little bit more than that to get a, a nice looking footage. And when you're shooting at 60 frames per second, if you can, then that means that you can extend that in post and make that two seconds turn into five and make a really nice cinematic version of what that shot would look like and things look great in slow motion as well. So, and you're able to do that in 4K. I love shooting 4K because it allows me to crop, reframe, stabilize anything that you want to in post. This is built in image stabilization as well, which is nice when using it with prime lenses. And so there are just so many features on this. And again, you're gonna have to wait for my full review. If you wanna see some footage from this camera, there's a link as well. Maybe we'll put it up here in the link below as well. If you've been shooting weddings, one of the most horrible things is that weddings normally last more than 30 minutes and these other cameras time out at 29 minutes. And so if you haven't bought a GH5 yet, the main reason for switching is I don't have to worry. I can hit record on this and record for hours. If I need to hot swap cards, I can do that while recording. It is just really cool to be able to shoot, turn on my cameras 15 minutes before the ceremony, not worry about them until 15 minutes after. I can dual record the same footage on both cards if I need to for safety. It is just transforming the way that we're able to shoot weddings and giving us some of that extra security that you would have in photos by shooting dual to both cards. Now we can get that in video as well. So really, really cool camera, my main shooter. Now. Uh, I used to do a lot more shooting with a Panasonic G7. This was actually the camera that kind of transformed me from Canon to Panasonic. It is unbelievable quality. I've been shooting my YouTube videos on this for years, 
and great quality 4K shooter. If you need to shoot 4K and need something good quality, this is it. It's not super good in low light, but at 1600, it can kind of pull off pretty good image quality. And so it is an unbelievable shooter. I use this at the back of my ceremonies most of the time. And with 4K, I can punch in if I need to. Great little camera. You can get some wide aperture lenses for this and it does a great job. So those are my main cameras. I usually take two GH5s and then one of those and those three cameras will kind of pull it off. Now, let me talk about this. Uh, I use a gimbal. It is great for cinematic shots, good motion. I've been using the Xeon Crane for a while. It's a great gimbal. I love it. I just recently got this Moza Air in. I used it for the last wedding that I shot, and I'm very pleased with this as well. It can go to a little bit higher weights, which is nice. I'm not quite sure which one I prefer yet, but this one is actually cheaper. I love having dual handles as well, and this one comes with it, which is really nice where you have to pay extra on it with a crane. But if you don't have one of these, 600 bucks is the starting price for this Moza Air, and it is unbelievable. I like it a lot, and for 600 bucks, it will transform the way that you shoot. It's really easy to set up, and yeah, these things work so well. I would say I go through about three to four batteries on a given ceremony, so just keep that in mind. With the image stabilization on this running full time, it's a little bit worse than before. I want to show you this new light that I just got. This is the ICANN, I don't even know what this thing is called. ICANN ILED 6 LED light. And this is really awesome and I keep this in my bag because there are just so many moments that you need to light up a little detail or something like that, a ring shot, you need a little bit extra fill or a spot. What I like about this is I can focus it. So I can focus my beam on whatever I need if I need a tungsten balance it. There I got it. And so overall you have basically all the features you need wrapped up in this and you can get some really, really cool lighting in a relatively small portable light. And this thing goes in my bag. It's great, dimmable. It uses Sony batteries, so these things are a dime a dozen. You can pick up tons of these. I have them. Uh, comes with a charger, battery, quarter 20 mount in the bottom of it. It's overall just an amazing light. I like it a lot. These are not new Zoom H1s. I keep a couple of these around. These are great to have for recording just about anything. Here's something that is new. This is a Tascam, what is this? The DR10L. This is a built-in recorder into your lav mic and this is the coolest thing in the world and I have one I'm about to buy a second one or a third because these are just unbelievable I throw these on the groom they are so small the groom barely even notices they're there and this will record everything built in audio here I've had some grooms that are really paranoid about me sending audio I think they think I'm going to start broadcasting them before and after the ceremony all of this is, I don't know what they think but they're really really paranoid so with this one I just tell them that it's all being recorded locally here. No one will ever hear this. I can never monitor what they're saying with headphones and it kind of puts them at ease. I have no idea why they do that, but it is a great thing. You have a headphone out on this thing if you need to monitor it before you set it up and micro SD card, USB, and it's just amazing. So small, so, so portable. It comes with a windscreen as well, but it is built like a tank. Overall, amazing. Can you just say that these things are cheap too? They're like a hundred and something dollars. I paid that for a lab without recording and I used to give this to a groom and make him wear this in his pocket along with a lab mic and wire it into here or I would have to go wireless into another recorder. So this really just transforms the way that I'm shooting this. Now I'm using the Roadlink right now. I use this a lot for the efficient. It's a lot bigger, bulkier. It does mean that I have to have the other camera on. The good thing about that is I can monitor the audio from the camera and control the levels. The bad thing is that if anything happened to that camera or levels, then all of it is gone. So I'm really thinking about switching over to just using these Tascam systems for now, but uh, these road links work pretty well. I've had an issue once or twice, but overall they work, but these are just amazing. So this is the DR60D. I kind of have a love-hate relationship. There's a new one out right now. I'm not sure if I would recommend buying this over the Zooms. The Zooms are great recorders. The battery life on this is my biggest issue. It really sucks. Uh, the good thing about this is you can put it, well, well, the reason why I first bought it is you can put this below the camera. That made so much sense to me, but I almost never use it like that. But it works really well for recording the DJ booth. You have quarter inch, uh, XLRs, mini, eighth inch, uh, basically anything you want. You can dual record to two separate channels if you want. Get It, it basically does everything that I want. The only thing that sucks is the battery life. I usually USB power this with a USB power, and that works really well. The other thing I don't like is you have to hit the record button twice. You put it once. The earlier zooms were like this, but I think a new one is not. You hit the button once and it goes in a standby. You hit it again, it records. 
let's just record when I hit the record button. That's going to be the easiest way to go. But overall, it's a decent recorder. The levels are good and there is a new one of this one and the price is unbelievable. So for this kind of price, you really just can't beat it. And I find that I don't need the microphones on this one. I have the H1N if I need microphone levels. So this works unbelievably well for that. This is the DR10X and if you do not own this, you need to pick this thing up. It is absolutely amazing. Again, just like the other Tascam, this is a recorder built into it. Look how tiny this thing is and is a recorder built in. Uh, there's so many reasons. Shotgun mics, they're, they're really necessary. Look at this. Just pop this right on here. And now I have my shotgun mic recorded. So I can mic a cabinet if I need to mic this. I can just mic, I, I throw these everywhere. I mean, this is just unbelievable to be able to mic whatever you want with nice quality sound. Also keep a standard mic around. If you need to do speeches or interviews, pop this on here. I want to wait till it clicks. I think that's going to be a better solution. But now I'm recording whatever that I want. These things are so small, they're pretty discreet, and I can give these to anybody and be recording straight from the mic, and it's amazing. So if you do not own one of these, definitely get them. Coolest pieces of technology to come out this year other than camera. It has transformed my audio. It has made life so much simpler, and these are inexpensive as well, just over 100 bucks. So yeah, buy these things out, throw them everywhere. You cannot have enough redundancy in audio. You need audio for your videos. These things are amazing and they work well for just about anything. And these are 758s, they're just workhorse mics. I had this one for probably 15 years. It still works well. You can beat this thing around, it doesn't do anything. So let's bring out the big guns. When you really need a big light, and I use this at my ceremonies, the 120T by Aperture. If you haven't checked out the review on this, I do have a full review on this one. I have the Fresno mount as well, which means that I can zoom this thing in and it works unbelievable. It, this is a tungsten version and I like that one because most of the lights at receptions are gonna be tungsten balanced. And so this fits in with those. It's super quiet, you can't even hear this thing. You can battery power this as well. It takes V-mount batteries, but I also have this adapter to use Sony batteries. It won't power it that long and it won't power it 100% but it will give you some power if you need something quick. These are so good, they work great as backlights, spotlights, whatever you need them for. So these are the memory cards I use. They're the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I use 128 gig cards. I can shoot an entire wedding on one of these cards. I hate taking cards out of the camera, especially now with the GH5 where I can dual record these things. I find that the safest place for me to put a card is inside this camera. At the end of the wedding, I can pop out one card, put it somewhere else, and then have my other one in the camera. This thing is basically waterproof when it's inside of here. So no matter what happens, if I drop the camera, whatever, this is gonna be protected. So I keep one in here and one somewhere else after the ceremony is done and never have to take out a card. These are great, they're pretty fast. This will actually take UHS-2 cards. So at some point I'm gonna update to UHS-2, but right now the prices are sky high. And so right now I'm using these, but they're great cards. They're not that expensive at all, 128 gig. I think runs under 70 bucks. So definitely pick up a couple of these and they work really well. If you guys want me to break down this gear anymore, say so in the comments below and I'll do my best. Again, the GH5 review is coming up. Subscribe, like, really appreciate it guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for a whole lot more to come.